Let's go. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Or should I say, welcome to tonight's AA meeting. I'm James Wright and I have a tool problem. Um, <laughs> you, you can thank Alan for that uh, intro. Or no, it wasn't Alan, it was someone else who gave me that. Either idea, way, but, uh... I'm still a moderator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my wife's here to keep an eye on me and make sure everything goes right. Um, tonight yeah, we're I'm going... the one with the drink. Anyways. <laughs> yes. um, she is still sick. Well, a new sickness bug has overtaken her. She's almost healed again. And uh, so you'll have to uh, bear with us one more week. Is it four or five weeks now in a row? I think I'm not hacking a lung anymore. Yeah, no, coughing's gone. So, yeah, if she has to turn around and run out of here quickly. Um, oh, stop! Good <laughs> gravy, man! <laughs> she looks good though. Oh, let's get what we're doing. We're making a uh, uh, we're making a, a, a planter box. Uh, I want to actually make a small herb garden that I can put outside the window. So on the kitchen, I can open up the window and pick up herbs and uh, use them. So that is what we're going to be making tonight. Um, but before we get into that, I want to just go through uh, a few of the upcoming things. Um, number one, my book. Oh, it's over by you. We do have a winner. For uh, this we week's drawing, yes. If I was smart, I would have put that over there earlier. But uh, well, I won't say anything. There were several people who suggested that I make a planter or a flower box or something of that nature, and the first person to suggest it was uh, Franklin Anderson. So congratulations, Franklin! You Congrats. are winning a strop. If you can send me. Uh, a link on if you go to woodbywrite.com and put a uh, put something in the comment in the, uh, the connection form in there. Let me know your address and I will make sure you get a strop. We're sending out the thirds, um, which are the not the seconds and not the primaries, but the thirds. And they usually have a corner coming off them, but they're perfectly good horse hide strops. Um, just are a little bit of like a defect on some of them. So this week we will be giving away a card scraper, and I haven't figured out what we're going to be doing for that. But we're just doing the one giveaway now for everyone rather than doing one live and one regular. Um, so we'll be announcing that a little bit later, how you can win a card scraper, uh, which those are for sale on my shop. We do sell Wood by Right card scrapers. Um, what else do we have coming up? Right around the corner in two weeks. Uh, actually, less than two weeks. Uh, no, two weeks. Um, two weeks from this weekend. Um, I will be going to the MWTCA meet here in Loves Park which is just a couple miles away from me. Um, so Northern Illinois, and I'm looking forward to meeting many of you there. Um, if you are not members of the Midwest Tool Collectors, you have to be members in order to get in. You can become a member at the door um, and then pay the entrance fee. Um, but if you're, an ember, if you're a member, then you'll be getting invites to all those. Um, as well as there will be a meet coming up in June, which is the national meet in Peoria. Uh, that is the, the big tool meet. It is the largest tool sale in the world um, by far for antique tools. Um, so that's coming up uh, June 12th, I want to say, something like that. Uh, but if you become a member of the Midwest Tool Collectors, you'll get an invite to that as well. Um, oh, and we will be in U uh, the UK coming up in May, May 11th and 12th for Makers Central. So my wife and I will both be there. So looking forward to seeing you at that. Um, oh, I've got to show these off. i got to show these off. I just got these in the mail, and if you're following along, I just put out the first video in the table build, in the table build, my brain is still stuck on the table build, in the bed build that I'm building, and I just got these in, um, and these were made by a viewer who, let me see if I can focus in on these, there we go, um, let me switch over to two. Uh, these are actually going to be the pins that hold the long stretchers into the legs. Um, so traditionally you would have like a, uh, a tusked tooth tenon. I want to do more like a drawbore tenon, but rather than having a wooden drawbore, I want to put these in. And so this will go through the leg, through the tenon, and into the leg. And then when you want to take it the better part, you can pull this out and it pulls both pins out. So on the outside you'll, have, you'll be seeing this decorative piece uh, right up next to the legs. So I'm loving how those came out. Um, yeah, just really cool. But we'll be showing those later. But I just got these in, so I had to show them off. <laughs> well, thank you, Alan. Oh, I Alan, thank you. I don't have the lights in here. Uh, they're off. But the Alan has purchased the joke. So let's see, what's the next joke? Well, he has a joke. Oh, yeah, he had one. Uh, what is it? I don't. Uh, he's been giving. Oh, I do have a light that came on. Oh, look, it's ha. Carl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys can't quite see that, can you? Yeah, oh well. 
Um, yeah, Ellen had a joke earlier. What was it? Uh, I don't like perforated lines. They're terrible. Does it count when you give him his own joke back? Okay, yeah, I'll give jo- give him another one then. Um, no, we did that one last time. Oh, why don't melons have weddings? Because they can't elope. Thank you, Alan, Welcome to Woodrow Wright, where we have the worst jokes on the internet. Or hot chocolate. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Um, okay, so let's actually get into this project. And if you are new to Woodrow Wright and you're watching this and it's not live, there is a link down below to all the questions that are asked with timestamps so you can immediately jump to those. Um, so if you have any questions pertaining to the build or just in general, uh, feel free to go and uh, uh, put those in the chat. My wife will get to me when we have time. It counts. <laughs> So we are making this um, out of white oak. I know, surprise, surprise, white oak. Uh, but in this case, white oak is a very particular choice. Um, it is a great wood for exterior work. Um, actually um, survives very well outside. Um, I prefer live oak. It's a little bit longer lasting, but white oak is a really good word, wood for external, but external builds. Um, right up there with, with cedar and how well it lasts outside. So the white oak will work pretty well. And this board is what, uh, five and a quarter inches wide is my guess? Five and a half? Five inches, oh my, I was off. Um, and I'm gonna build this without plans and I'm gonna build it off the seat of my pants and we're gonna build it live. So I'm gonna try and get it all out of this. I don't know if I can get the bottom out as well. It depends on how long we make it. Um, and so tonight we're going to be doing um, cutting it to length, cutting out the pieces, and doing some of the rough shaping. And I want to show you a couple different methods of doing that uh, with a shooting board, without a shooting board, different ways of cutting it. And then hopefully we're going to get into cutting the dovetails into it. Um, we'll see about that. And then we're also, in the next video, we're going to be doing um, cutting a groove for the bottom, making the bottom, and doing a pillowed, um, uh, pillowed panel. So just like you'd have a relieved panel in a door, we're going to be making that for the bottom on it. And then we'll be doing some detail work on the corners and possibly a little bit of carving. And then on the last one, we may end up doing a video that is at like noon and actually doing this outside and mounting it onto the house. Um, so I'm, I'm Donde? Gonna, what's that? Where? Where what? Where would we mount it? Oh, outside the window. So you can open the window well, and then have the herbs. Which window? I didn't talk to her about this. No! Probably surprise! the one beside the refrigerator. I walked, I looked on Facebook and looked, we were making a flower thing and it went, <laughs> She didn't oh! know about this until moments ago. <laughs> okay. So that's why I want to know which window. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm thinking about like a little herb garden so I can, I can have my herbs. Um, yeah, I don't do flowers as much. I want them to be useful. So uh, let's cut this to length. So the first thing we have to figure out is how long do we want to make this box. And so I want it about two feet, about uh, two feet, um, and about six inches wide uh, deep as well. Um, but the size really doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing that matters is that the two end boards need to be the same length and the two face boards need to be the same length. Um, so we're going to put this out. The first thing wow, I need to do is. Wow, that's here, like kindergarten geometry. I know. It's, <laughs> And that's, like that's the way I do a lot of designs, that. is I have the, the general length. So I'm going to back this one out a bit and show you what we've got going on over here. Oop, where did my clicker go? means kitchen window. Oh, there it is. Uh, two. Yeah, but you can't reach it. So first thing we need to do is come down here and create a straight end on this because most rough sawn boards have a rough end. And I've got this uh, little bit of pith out here where it's gotten wet because this is air dried. <laughs> so I'm just going to put it on here, draw a line. And this is where our first cut will be to cut it off there. Now we need to figure out how long we want this to be. And so I could come out here and I could measure out two feet and say, we're going to cut it there. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come out here and I say, I want the box to be this long. That looks about right. So we're going to make the box this long. And forever more, this line that I'm drawing right here is the length of the box. Then I'm going to come out here. I like the how next... you don't measure the window to we'll know how. Much well, I know what the <laughs> window is by eye. The window is actually about that, so it's going to be a little smaller in the window. Just and that's like okay. it was five and a half inches wide. Mm -hmm. I was off by a quarter inch. If I'm off by the quarter inch, half, but get enough. off me! <laughs> uh, let's see. We want the box to be a little bit deeper 
a little bit deeper than it is deeper. We want it to be deeper than it is deeper. <laughs> we want its depth. Not, yeah, okay. We're going to cut the other board at uh, this length. So there's my two lengths. And what I'm going to do is take this over and cut off one, two, three. And then I'm going to have these two pieces that I can then lay out and cut off the other ones to match whatever these are, which they come out to, let's see, I'm guessing uh, 22 inches. We're at 21 and a quarter. And I'm going to say six and a quarter. And we are at uh, six and three eighths. <laughs> hey, an eighth inch off ain't bad. Quit laughing at me. I am allowed. <laughs> you gave that permission a So let's show a couple ago. different ways of cutting this thing up. <laughs> um, number one is I want to cut this down a little shorter so that it's not all over the place. And so I like to do a lot of my rough cutting here on the vise. Let me turn this so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, and so one thing I do need is a line on top. So I'm going to take my knife, put it into that line, slide it over, and mark it. Bring this camera over here too. So you can see those two. There we go. Focus. Focus. There we go. Uh, two. And for this first one, I'm going to use my carcass saw. Um, a carcass saw is a cross-cut tooth, usually somewhere around 14 inches long, about two and a half inches or so deep, um, but everyone's going to vary a little bit from that. Now, I'm not going to be able to cut all the way through like this. So what you can actually do is get down an angle and cut all the way through like that, which is the way I like to do it. Not everyone does, but I'm weird. Isn't that right, babe? And I'm going to start it so I'm right across the board, keeping it down, and then I'm just going to follow this line straight down the board. The other thing that this does is it gives you a lot of control because if you get off the line one way or the other, it's very easy to follow that line a little bit closer. What do you... Here, let me zoom in and focus a little bit more. Show you that line following. I don't know if you'll be able to see that line. Oh, yes. You can see the line? I can see the line. So then we can just cut straight down this. Now I'm in a weird angle, which is always a fun one. I'm trying not to let it fall. So there, we've got our board cut. That's one way to cut it. And with a five inch slide board, that's not a normal way for me to cut it. Um, it's just, if I were doing like two inches wide, I'd probably do it that way. Maybe four inches wide, but at the bench. And number two is I can get out a bench hook um, yeah, let's do a bench hook cut for this one. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the bench hook. A lot of people are, but I'm not. I'm going to use, oh, geez. I'm gonna drop things on the floor. Surprise. I'm going to use my Sloyd hooks because I have a longer board. It allows me to space these out. And I can have something that still supports it all the way out there. So why did you show it that way then if it's not the way? Because you most of the most of the boards I do, I'll, I'll do it that way, but not longer ones like this. Um, so if they're making a not, I I, I do I don't work with boards five inches wide as often as I do with other things, um, and so usually I'm going to be doing my my carcass cutting that way. Um, but in a wider board, I might bring it over here to the bench hook and do it this way. And so in this one, I'm going to do basically the exact same cut, but I am, rather than being vertical, I'm going to do it horizontal. And so I'm going to start on the far side, nick it in, and then bring my heel down across the board, again following that line. Because I'm going so steep, I'm actually going to cut into the slot of my vise so that I'm not hitting into the bench. I'm actually going to go into the vice gap. And then once I have it, that line cut across, I'm just going to focus on keeping the saw vertical. I don't want to make it lean one way or the other. I just want to keep it up and down. So 
support the wood so it doesn't fall can, over. Can I ask a question? What's that? Because it's me and you know me and not the woodworker. Yeah. When would you move to a bigger saw? Because it looks like that's just... Yes. Um, the carcass big. saw is, is your, your joinery saw. Um, yeah, I am on this camera. Good. Uh, carcass saw is the, the joinery saw. So it is for more of your smaller boards. So you're not always using boards that are five inches wide. Most of the time you're working with boards that are two, three, maybe four inches wide. That's fairly standard. Um, and, but the carcass saw is the saw that I am most comfortable with. The carcass saw is generally the saw that I'm using more than any other. And so a lot of times my saw choices are based on what I'm comfortable with, not just what is the best saw for the situation. Um, so the best saw for this situation probably would be a back saw. It would be a, uh, uh, a half back saw, but I don't have a half back saw. I need to get one of these days. But I don't oh, I'm one. sure. Any excuse. I need one now. <laughs> um, but I'm going to show you yet one other way, which is probably how I'm going to do the rest of these. And so here I have a panel saw, and this has a cross-cut filed teeth, tooth on it. Teeth? Tooth? Cross-cut teeth. Um, and it's a fairly small, I'm guessing it's about 10. Yeah, see, that would have been my About choice. 10 TPI. Um, and this is a little bit more aggressive than I like, and this particular saw has a little bit more set, so it's, the teeth are splayed out a little bit farther. So my cut is not going to be as clean as I with my carcass saw. With the carcass saw, the finish I get is, is joinery ready. Uh, I'm probably going to come back and shoot these up, clean them up a little bit, which I'll be showing that in here a little bit. Uh, with this one, I definitely need to clean it up. So for this, we're actually going to go over to the saw bench, and I'm going to show you the third method, which I'm probably going to do for all the rest of the cuts that we're going to do tonight. Unless, whoo! <laughs> I'm having camera issues here. Oh, that's right, I'm on a cord. I have to move it around. Hi. Boy, that's scary. Well, they weren't having nightmares yet. <laughs> Let's do it this way. Focus, there we go. Do you want to? Do I, I want a question? Well, I want to. Um, let me make this cut, and then we'll take some questions okay. while I lay out for the next ones. Um, so on this one, I'm going to be putting my knee on here, and this really drives a lot of people nuts putting knees on there, um, but once you do it, it actually gets pretty comfortable. Um, and so just like before, I'm going to start it, letting it slide on my thumb. My thumb is going to be guiding it over here. Once I get a nick in there, I'm going to be keeping the focus on the plate, being in line with my hand and my arm, my elbow, all the way up, this all being one line. I need to move over, I'm running into the bench. And then we go to town. And so you can see for cut wise, there really isn't a huge speed difference one to the other. Um, I mean, that may have been a little bit faster, but not by that much. So we move this back. Well, we set this up, I'll probably take a few questions here. Make sure that I'm in focus again. There we go. Um, <laughs> oh, here, let me show you the, the cut difference oh, between those. Oh, thank you, John. Hey, John, how's it going? Looking forward to seeing you next week. And just a second, let me show you this, and then I will give you a joke. It's all about making man glitter. <laughs> all about making man glitter, yes. Your focus. Well, they were talking about making an ASMR video of your uh, sawing and planing. <laughs> and I said it's bedtime uh, for dads, two. or bedtime sounds for dads. So here you can see, this is the cut ever. from the carcass saw. It is really nice and clean. You really can't see the saw lines on it. And this is the cut from the panel saw. It's rougher to the touch, but all honesty, with just a couple of plain passes, that will clean up nicely. So, um, Let's actually shoot these, but while I'm getting that set up, let's answer a few questions. What we got? Um, Come on, one. There we go. Andrew McCarter asked, how do you feel about the Veritas carcass saw compared this to thing. the Lee Nelson counterpart? Um, they're both great saws. Um, they will both cut well. Move this back a little bit so you can actually see what's going on. Um, the Lee Nielsen feels a little bit better in the hand. 
The Lee Nielsen is, is really designed for the experience and the feel of it. Um, also, the Lee Nielsen has a brass back, which always just feels a little bit nicer because it's a little heavier. Um, but for price-wise, <laughs> um, you you're not going to beat the Veritas because it's, it's dirt cheap in comparison. Um, they'll both cut just as well depending upon how they're sharpened. And after you use them for a while, you're going to have to go and sharpen both of them, and so it depends on your sharpening skill. Um, so if you sharpen these to the exact same capability, they will cut the exact same. Um, Is that so? so? There isn't that much difference. You didn't catch my humor, but anyway. What's that? I said, is that so? Because you're turning a tap. You're still not looking! I was making fun of your hands. I love you. <laughs> Pull out my shooting board. Uh, tell ya. Yeah. What other questions we got? Mm, we haven't had a whole lot. Okay. They were making fun of you mostly. Well, that's normal. So for the shooting board, this shooting board is out of square ever so slightly. And so it's something I have to work oh, on a little bit here. I found a question. Um, just want to clean these up a little bit. Okay. Like that. that now, I'm going to turn this over. One of the things, if you're not sure about your shooting square being square, the easy way to check it which I'm hoping to do a video here soon about how do you actually correct a shooting board. Oh, John, I gotta get you a joke. You paid for a joke. Let's see, uh, your joke is, <laughs> uh, no, not that one. Um, I like telling dad jokes. Sometimes he even laughs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So here's what we've got. If I put it on this way, I, I can, can get a nice... I can see your dad saying that joke. I can get a cut all the way from one side to the other. I could if my blade was sharp. <laughs> I'm getting a really clean cut. Um, but if I flip it over, then I'm only hitting it right here. And so I know that my two angles are off ever so slightly. So, number one, I can come back and adjust my shooting board and do that, or I can ditch the shooting board altogether, which is what I tend to do more often. Um, I don't know why, but I've just gotten to the point where I don't use the shooting board much. Um, I find freehanding the ends to actually be a little bit faster and far more fun. So I'm gonna show you what I do for that. Any questions while I'm doing this? I have a couple questions. Okay, what you got? Um, so. I'm going to do first the follow-up to the saw question that you just did. Uh -huh. um, so he said, all right, then a better question is, should you get a cross-cut or a rip-cut carcass? <laughs> all right, this is one of the things that drives me crazy about Veritas, is a carcass saw has cross-cut teeth. There is no such thing as a rip-saw carcass saw. But yet Veritas has one that they call a carcass saw that they sell both in the rip saw and in the cross cut. Um, and that is so confusing to people because the, the rip saw is really just a small tenon saw. It's not a carcass saw. Um, so I really wish they would change that because it confuses so many people. <laughs> um, a carcass saw has rip teeth, a tenon saw has uh, excuse me, a carcass saw has cross-cut teeth, a tenon saw has rip teeth. Um, so get one with cross-cut, that's a carcass saw. Um, yeah, okay, so let me show you what I do for, uh, for just freehanding these, which is what I do more than anything Tying else. Tying his hair back. <laughs> What's that? Nothing. First thing I wanna do is actually check where it's at, and I can see that I'm flat all the way across. And if I put it on, let's put it on this way. From this side, I'm pretty close to flat. It's a little high over here. And then I can check this side. And yeah, I can see it's about the same. So I, that way I can make sure that these two sides are parallel to each other. Because one of the problems with a, with, a, um, with a shooting board is if you're always keeping it up against one side or the other, you don't know what the other side is. And if these two sides wiggle one way or the other, 
um, you need to know which one you're adjusting off. So normally I'm going to plane one of these sides smooth and use that as my reference edge. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to do this. So I need to take a little bit off of this end. So what I'm going to do is bring this over here and take a little bit off this end. Short cut, longer cut, longer cut, until I get all the way through. Now I'm not going to go all the way through. I'm going to start going until I'm over here and my blade stops around, around there. I'm not going to go all the way out because if I go all the way out, I'm going to blow out this end. Now I can bring this over and I'm dead on there. Then I'm dead on there. And I'm right on there. That's that end. <laughs> then we can flip it over and do it on this one. And this one's going to need a lot more work, so I'm going to show you the full size on this. This whole thing, it's tilted that way. And this end, we're pretty good that way. And we're pretty good that way. If anything, this is the high side and this is the low side, but not by much. So I'm going to take this in here and just focus on this edge right along here. And I can look into the mouth and see where things are coming out until I'm getting a shaving going all the way across. And I know that now I'm flat. I'm going to turn it around. And this then allows me to come in from the other end. And I'm not going to go out the other side. I'm just going to do it from one side to the other. And some people think that that is going to make it tip one way or the other, or you're going to end up with a valley in the middle. Well, the thing is, if you just go to halfway through and you don't go out the other side, this side is not going to change. So when the toe gets there, it's always going to be at the same point. So if you do a few strokes from one side and a few strokes from the other side, this ends up giving you a nice flat surface all the way across. So let's actually see where we're at. And I need to take a little bit more off of this side. Yep. Just a little bit off this side. And when I'm not talking, this is usually just like three or four seconds one side, three or four seconds the other, and this board's done. Let's do it to this one, and then we can use these as the basic pieces. So while I'm finishing this up, what questions do we have? Um, well, first of all, because you were just using your plane, they want, there's always a question as to what plane you're using. This is a Stanley Sweetheart, the new version of the 62 low angle jack plane. Um, it's one of the cheapest low angles you can get out there. Is it the best? No. Is it the cheapest? Pretty much usably, and I really enjoy it. Um, there are a few things on it that are cheap and make it feel cheap, but functionally, it works. So, I don't care. <laughs> uh, there are the, a lot of the purists out there will complain about it because it has an aluminum lever cap and they're expecting that to break. But I have not yet seen one break, and I haven't had any problem with mine. And so it actually is a, a really good plane. What else you got? Um, there was a question earlier by Ray Flowers. Uh, should a one and a half inch firmer chisel be in a huge format like a framing chisel or more towards a bench chisel? I, I personally, it's a personal taste, um, so everyone's going to have something different that they like. Personally, I like a firmer chisel to be more like a bench chisel. I like that length of tang, that length, that length of blade and tang. I like having a surface to ref reference off, um, but everyone's a little bit different. So, uh, personal preference. I really can't say one way or the other. Any other question while I do this? And there's one more I have from Ola Bovin. I learned to make very tight chisels, when but when assembling, they split out in small pieces. So I, I want to make really tight what? No. He's trying to make uh, tight dovetails, but when assembling, they split out into small pieces. Ah, that is often because you're trying to make them too tight. Um, don't. <laughs> um, no, if you make them too tight, you're literally putting a wedge in there and you're splitting out. So just like putting a wedge into a block of wood, driving it out and splitting it apart, you're doing the exact same thing. Um, so it usually means just taking a chisel and cleaning it up a little bit. Um, yeah, you're just trying to make them too tight. Loosen them up a little bit and you'd be amazed at what happens when you actually put glue into them. Everything expands a little bit and fills in gaps. 
um, that's that's not a uh, not a huge issue. Um, but don't don't try and make them that tight. Okay, um, so now that we have these cut, we're going to use these to make the other boards we need. So I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to flush up one end. I'm going to take my knife. And I'm just going to put in a nick here, and then take my square, put it on, put the knife into that nick, slide the square up against it, and mark. And this way I know this mark is precisely the same length as this board. Now I could put this on here and make out the next one, but the thickness of my blade might be slightly off. Um, so I'm going to take this over, cut it, and then make the next one. Uh, let me turn this around so you all can see. Without I'm doing focus. There we go. Two and cut this one out. Any questions while I'm setting this up? Um. Yes. Let's see. The camera's always getting in the way. Michael Brian asked, "Is that a bevel up plane, and is it better for end grain?" Uh, no, a low angle plane is a bevel uh, is a bevel up plane. Yes, uh, so yes, a low angle plane is a bevel up plane, um, and that is much better for end grain. The lower you can get the angle, the easier it is to cut end grain. You don't need it to cut end grain, but it's much easier than not. What? Uh oh, she's laughing at me again. Uh, nothing has changed in that regard. <laughs> what other question we got? Um, Trump UKGM it asked, is a Japanese chisel better than a normal chisel? <laughs> I don't even know if we're Japanese chisels. Uh, it depends on who you ask. That's a really personal question. There are many different mechanics to them. Is one better than the other? Absolutely not. Um, maybe better for you, maybe better for me, but there is no ones better than the other. Um, they are all made to completely wildly different standards. You can have a really cheap crummy Japanese chisel, and you can have a really cheap crummy Western chisel, and you can have a really good Japanese chisel, and you can have a really good Western chisel. They both chisel wood. Um, <laughs> you're gonna have, you're gonna find a lot of people with a lot of lore that say that one is better than the other. And that is why you have to use one and not the other. <sighs> but it's, it's a load of hooey. Um, don't believe them. <laughs> but in the end, it is a personal preference. So if you like Japanese chisels, then use a Japanese chisel. If you don't, then don't. What else we got? Uh, Matt Ezel asked, are you familiar with other brands of the low angle plane, such as Wood River and Lee Nielsen in particular, and how do they compare with the Stanley? Um, Wood River is a little bit better, but it's a little more expensive. Lee Nielsen is even better, but it's far more expensive. Um, so you get what you pay for. But those are both great ones, so. Let's cut this thing. ASMR. There. Now we need to clean up these two boards and we'll be ready to do some joinery. What time are we? Okay. Not quite going to get into the dovetail. Oh, let's do some grooves tonight. We'll do the grooves rather than dovetails and this will be a good one. So what other questions we got? Um, JJ Nitz asked, what would be another good, wood, another good wood to make a saw bench out of besides white oak? Oh, any wood. Uh, white oak is not actually a great wood for it. White oak is what I have on hand. White oak is a lot of fun. I love the look of white oak, and that's why I use it. Um, but any wood, pine, cherry, walnut, any wood would make a good saw bench. I, I don't know if they're... Don't make it out of balsa, but pretty much anything else. <laughs> that would be an interesting one, a balsa saw bench. I haven't seen that one before. What else you got? 
Well, there was a question about the groove earlier. Now I'm trying to find it. Yeah, once you get good at this, um, you just kind of get an eyeball for what needs to be what. And you put a slight bit more pressure on the plane one spot or the other, and you end up with a nice cut. Oh, I, Matthew Anderson asked earlier, will you be making a groove for the bottom? I hope so. Would love to watch live how you make a groove yes. in a dovetailed jointed box. That's what I'm about to do, actually. Um, so as soon as I get these cleaned well, up, we're Matthew, going to put a groove along the bottom. Matthew, you got your wish. That way. So, yeah. Um, we're going to be doing a captured bottom, so it'll end up looking like a... Whoop, which way? Oh, that way. I'll turn this around. Um, it'll end up looking like a, uh, like a panel door with a raised panel, um, but in the bottom. Ah, easel. Got it. What's that? Nothing. Matthew was correcting my pronunciation of his name. Perfect. Two more ends, and we will do some grooving. Wait, were you the one I cleaned up already? Nope, you're the one I need to work on. <laughs> what else we got? Uh, that's caught up. We're caught up on questions? Uh, well, it's not a live Q&A. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Yeah, I don't know why. I really like doing it this way. I mean, because if my shooting board was set up nicely and everything was tuned in well, it would be faster to do it that way. But I, there's something I really enjoy about doing it freehand and getting it done right just is enjoyable. That's um, there, there's something about honing the skill rather than trusting a jig. And I think that's one of the big things about hand tools that I like is when you really dive into a lot of the different woodworking I'm traditions, picky now. a lot of them are focused on improving the skill as opposed to making the jig. But when you get into power tool traditions, they're all about making the jig rather than improving the skill. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of skill that goes into jigs, but uh, freehanding things is always much more fun. Did you say something? Nothing. Oh, she's reading. Almost. Oh, that one's off. I'm like off by a good degree side to side. Not good that way. Whenever I'm at the, the saw bench, I tend to lean one way slightly. And I end up overcorrecting the opposite direction every time. Not by much, just a little bit. And it's one of those things you gotta learn about yourself. And uh, I, every time I think about it, it just makes me lean a little bit more the other way. <laughs> and it's just off a couple shavings one way or the other. So there we go. We now have two boards that are this length. Let's see how close they are. Ooh, that's pretty. A blind man wouldn't be able to tell the difference in these two. These two, turn it that way. See, that feels better. <laughs> The sides on these are not parallel. And that's, uh, I didn't joint these. These are left from the, 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 uh, the, the table saw that came through. And they all have a slight wave to both sides. So no one side is parallel to the other side. And I could go through and joint them. Uh, but in this case, ah, no need for it. I'm making a window box. I'm not making the Taj Mahal. All right, let's actually do some, um, some grooving on this. And let's use a grooving plane. Now, if you want to see how to make a groove or a dado without a plane, I have a pile of videos on that. I have several lives where I've shown how to do it. Um, it's really easy to do with just a saw or just a chisel or with a, uh, with a, with a router plane. Um, there are so many different ways to do it. But most people can make one of these grooving planes in a matter of a couple hours. And with an old chisel, you can make a grooving plane very easily. And this is one of the first tools I ever made. I still use it. I, haven't, I don't think I've sharpened it in a while. It's still good and sharp. But the nice thing about a grooving plane is you can set it up and in a few minutes be going straight to town. You don't have to worry about setting up a jig or a router. 
because most of the time when you're making a groove, you're making a quarter inch by quarter inch. Let's use these ones. Uh, so a groove that's a quarter inch deep, a quarter inch wide, and a quarter inch in from the end. And so if you have a grooving plane that's set up for quarter by quarter by quarter, you're good to go. And you can just pick it up and run a groove, just like that. And for a plane I haven't done any setup on, I haven't used this plane in six or seven months. Oh, you don't have your months. overhead camera. They can't see. Yeah, I don't have the overhead camera tonight. We were uh, running into problems with that. Is there a way you can use the other camera? They really can't see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, let me do this. Two. Let me turn this off. Yeah, that one's making noise. Um, so this one, I'm not doing it quite deep enough. So let's actually tap this in a little bit more. I haven't set this thing up in six months or more. It's been sitting in here through the winter, so things have changed a little bit. But with that much work, we're making a groove. And this is the very thing that got me into hand tools. I watched Worth the Effort making a grooving plane a while ago and saw him do it with all hand tools and thought, holy cow, I can do that too. <laughs> and up until that point, I was all power tools. If there was anything to be made, I made it with power tools. But once I saw a couple simple things being done with hand tools, I realized my life was about to change. And this is so much fun than a router. And if you're thinking about it, how long does it take you to set up a router table? Pulling out the bit, chucking up the router, getting the router into the table, setting up the fence, running the test pieces, just to make a quarter by quarter by quarter groove. And in the time it takes you to find the bit and pull the router out, I've just made the groove. So just like that, we have a groove that is a quarter inch deep, a quarter inch over, and a quarter inch down. <laughs> Actually, this one's a little bit less than a quarter inch. Um, so I made it, I moved the fence over a little bit more to make this, um, what about 3 16 inch wide as opposed to a quarter inch. Um, so it's actually a little bit lower, which I kind of like for drawer bottoms. And you can see that. And here you can see I actually leaned the plane a little bit. So that's something I need to work at. And you can check this on here. My plane was actually leaning rather than being 90 degrees like this. It was leaning more like that. See how the groove was kind of off on that. So I can just practice that on the next one. Become a little bit better for the next time. And then we can grab another one and have even more fun. And this is just, I have literally come down here and done this for hours on end because it's, it's that enjoyable. I'm sure the only reason is because it's enjoyable. Well, you get these curls too. Oh, I'm sure those are the only reasons too. Why, what reasons were you thinking? Where you hide? I don't know what you're talking about. I never <laughs> hide in the basement. Oh, I love these curls. Okay, can you see them coming out the other end? Yes, we can see the curls. Yeah, let me show you that over there. This is where the fun happens. Oh, not way over there. Yeah. Let's try this. There we go. Here's the curls. So when these come out every time. And just like that, we've got another groove. And, you know, if you're just doing a box or a couple of grooves, this is so much faster than pulling out a router. And that was one of the things that was just one of those aha moments of, I can spend a couple hours and make one of these and have it for the rest of my life and ready to go. And it saves me far more than a couple hours in setup. And it's a hand tool. Um, this is just one of those places where hand tools beat power tools hands down every time. Um, but most people don't realize it because most people are afraid of hand tools. So uh, let's do finish up these and I think we're about ready to call it quits once I get these done. Actually, let me just stop this. I'm going to do these off camera. And so next time we get together, we're going to be doing the dovetails on it. Do you and have your fro around here? What's that? Do you have your fro? Your Bob Ross here? Yeah. 
Do you want to put it on? <laughs> I couldn't remember. It is really it. dusty. Oh, I wasn't going to be able to reach it anyways if they wanted me to grab it. <laughs> I did not have curls. curly hair. What? They were asking if I had curly hair because you were so fixated. Oh, never mind. Now he's... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Wood by Right. <laughs> oh, he yes. has the curls, not I. You can't <laughs> tell it anymore. Yes, this is... Uh, my hair isn't quite this dark. It's, <laughs> really? Um, yeah. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a dark blonde, dirty blonde. Um, but it's about this curly. So if I let it grow out, I could probably do this with it. Well, not anymore. It won't grow out. No, now way. it's gray and, and Gone. half missing. <laughs> I should send out a crew to find it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just in my happy place. And I have a lot of people ask me all the time. Oh, this is getting hot. I'm going to take that off. I have people ask me, you know, uh, do you sell what you make or how do I buy what you make? And I have to tell people I am not a professional woodworker. I'm not a historical woodworker. Uh, I, I don't try and do things historically. I don't try and do them accurately. I'm not a fine woodworker. I don't try and make precision perfect things. I come down here in the shop to have fun. And I do that through finding ways that are fun. And so I do things that are very different, such as freehanding the end grain as opposed to using a shooting board, um, such as making curls that are done with an old junky Harbor Freight chisel set into a plane. Um, I, I like finding those weird ways that are enjoyable. And that's where I come down to the shop here for it. And so that is my, my thing is I, I am, I'm not a professional woodworker. I'm not a fine woodworker. I'm not a historical woodworker. I'm a woodworker who just has fun. And I hope that comes across in this channel because that is, that's where my passion is at. Well, that and my wife. And my kids. Oh, and yeah. I have to get into other things now. But the woodworking's pretty close up there. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Lucky it's a hobby that's What's that? It's a hobby with benefits? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she said it, not me. <laughs> oh, and ultra running. Oh. <laughs> that's my other wife. Yeah, it is. At least this one has benefits. This one you can still call me downstairs. Well, and I get things out of it. Like what, you don't like my sexy body from running? <laughs> this is just... <laughs> Let's get back on topic. What questions we got? Oh, right. Do you have any left? Um, well, I thought there was one, but then we got distracted by all the happy little curls. Oh. Yes. Hang on. Uh, there, I don't know why. These curls, that that's what got me into... Um, Every time I make the curls, they're fun. The end grain oh. curls, a well, white oak end grain is incredible. Here, let me show you some of this. Focus in on this. Focus. White oak end grain is really something cool. Um, you can see all those holes through it. Delicate little pieces. Beautiful wood. Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> what we got? All right, hang on. Don't start. I didn't start the not BG thing this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you missed the comment earlier. How many planes do I have? I have a lot of planes. Um, I haven't. I have not counted them. Um, hey, there's a question for giving. Yeah. Us. Oh, we do need. Yeah, we need to do the, the, the giveaway. Um, so for next week. Because um, I'm guessing this will be about three weeks to make this box. Um, and to give you an idea, when I sat down and looked at it, um, if I were to make this box without talking about it and just hearing the shop, this is about a two to three hour project in the shop with hand tools to make a planter. Um, dovetails and all uh, for me. Can I turn up my volume? And, so uh, quick? No, you just need to lean a little bit closer. Um, but we're going to be doing it in three sessions. So we'll be doing this tonight. Um, tomorrow will be the dovetailing um, and possibly doing some of the trim work before glue up. And then I'll do the glue up off channel or I'll, I'll like start the glue up and then finish it off the video. Um, and then the third one will be uh, putting the bottom into it. Or no, the glue up doesn't come until after the bottom. That would be a bad thing if I glued it up and then forgot, oh, I got to put a bottom into this modified <laughs> okay um for next week 
We are again, giving away okay. a card scraper. What's up? Can I can I just ask the last question and then? What's up? Uh, Jerome Cornett asks, would you use the low angle jack plane if you were using a shooting board or a regular number five or number six? Um, either or. The low angle back plane is a little bit better because the low angle jack plane, um, lower angle is better on end grain. It cuts a little bit cleaner, but a really well set up five or six will do just as well. Um, I, I, there are a lot of people out there who really prefer the five or six. A lot of people out there really prefer the low angle jack. Um, for me, the low angle is a little bit better. I think I prefer that on a shooting plane, but everyone's a little bit different. And uh, yeah, I might do a video showing how to adjust that or Actually, it's about time I need to make a new shooting board and make a new video on that. So I might make a new one here soon. We'll see. Um, oh, yes. So this week, we are giving away a card scraper. And I sell these on my channel. Um, but I have been giving away a card scraper with a thumb saver magnet, uh, which is one of the tricks whenever you're using a card scraper. They tend to heat up. Um, when you're doing it right, they heat up and they'll burn your thumbs. So if you just get a refrigerator magnet and put it on there, it saves your thumbs, so that it keeps them cool. And I actually sell wood by right refrigerator magnets, which I call them thumb savers. <laughs> so to win with this, uh, once this video goes active on the website, so not right now in the live chat, don't do it in the live chat. Uh, once it goes active, you can come back and put a comment on the regular video. And in that comment, uh, I need you to guess at, um, Let's do how many planes do I have in my shop? That will give me a chance to actually go and count them all. How many planes do I have in my shop? Um, so put a number in the comments and Not the person yet. who comes closest will get the card scraper and thumb saver. And uh, yeah, and if you don't win, you can still buy them on my website. They're just gonna freeze this shot. Well, not oh this no, one. this is, what I have here is, um, it is not all of my plans, let's put it that way. <laughs> there's a lot more over there, and there's a lot more over there, and there's a lot more over there, and yes, I have planes everywhere. There is a video that had a shop tour at one point, but I'm sure you've added some. I've added then. a lot more since then. Um, I get a lot of planes that, um, I have a whole pile over here I want to do videos on restoration. Um, I have some that are in the middle of restoration, I have a pile over there that are restored or don't need to be restored that I'm giving away to different people for different reasons. Um, then I have a pile over there, of uh, ones that just don't fit up here but I'm using regularly um, or I want to do a video about. Um, and so I have lots of other planes. Um, but these are my most common user planes, except for the ones on the top shelf, only about 10% uh, of those are actually planes that I've ever used. Most of them are molding planes, which you may use one once um, in a lifetime. Cool. Any last minute questions? Well, I have four of them. Okay. Let's do these four questions and then call it a night. Okay. Maze Woodworking asks, what is a good wood to use hand tools on if you're just getting into hand tools such as easy to plane, et cetera? Whatever wood you have on hand. Um, <laughs> I, I use a lot of white oak, but it is actually a very, very difficult to wood to work. Plane. It is not a good hand tool wood. Uh, but that being said, if you learn how to use white oak, you can work on any wood out there. Um, it is, it's quickly dulling, the grain goes everywhere, it's fractious, and so once you learn how to conquer those things, um, you can work on any wood. And so that way, it might be a good beginner wood, but if you're the type of person who gets easily frustrated, it's not a good wood. Um, cherry, walnut are really forgiving hand tool woods. Um, poplar, poplar is cheap and you can get it at most home centers. And that is a really good wood for hand tools um, and a, a decent wood for most all construction. Poplar is really good for it. Um, let's see what other things. Uh, basswood, which is fairly expensive because it's more small things for carving wood. Um, cottonwood, which depending upon where you are, a lot of times cottonwood is sold as poplar. Um, but those are the most common easy woods to work with. So whether or not you think of a good beginner wood as an easy or a good beginner wood, as in teaches you a lot of things, depends on what you want. Um, so yeah, any wood is a good wood to begin with. All right, Ola Bo Boven asks, is there a big difference in hardness between oak and white oak? Um, I'm guessing between red oak and white oak is what you're referring to. Um, and that depends. 
Um, I have to start a lot of answers with that depends. <laughs> um, there are some red oaks that look and feel a lot like white oak. And there are some white oaks that look and feel a lot like red oaks. Um, there, there are a lot of different red oaks and there are a bunch of different white oaks. Um, there is a white oak that's actually called white oak and then there's swamp oak and then there are there's several other white oaks that fall under the category of white oak. And then red oak is a much larger um, classification. There's, there's a lot of other trees that fall under red oak. Um, so most of the time, white oak is a much harder wood. Um, white oak tends to be a little bit more fractious than red oak. Um, in other words, it splinters off a little bit more. Um, part of that is due to it having larger medullary arrays. Um, but there are some red oaks that look like white oaks and some white oaks that look like red oaks. Um, so, yeah. But in general, when you go to the store and you, you pick up a chunk of white oak, it is a harder wood than red oak. Um, noticeably harder. Matt Noonan asks, can you give me a level of effort to plane hard versus soft ma maple? <laughs> that depends on your plane. Um, if your plane is not set up well, uh, they are completely different beasts white oak uh, I mean hard maple just is a, such a hard wood to plane uh, because the blade has to be set up well in order for it to catch otherwise it like skips across the top and doesn't want to bite um, and so you've got to have a, an incredibly sharp plane um, once they're sharp though <sighs> um, okay again when people say soft maple and hard maple hard maple is sugar maple um, or it's what they also call rock maple or iron maple or uh, there's a bunch of different names for it. Every other maple out there is considered soft maple. And so there are some soft maples that are really soft and there are some soft maples that are pretty darn close to hard maple. Um, and so anything softer than the hardest of hard maples is still called soft maple. So sometimes they're going to feel very, very similar and sometimes they're very vastly different in feel. That being said, the average soft maple is usually red maple. Um, or our king, um, what do they call it, uh, king, king something maple. It's another common um, soft maple. Between that and sugar maple, uh, if the plane is set up well, they feel very similar. Um, they, they, they have a very similar resistance to it because they have a very similar um, flow to the wood. They're both diffuse porous woods, so they, 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 they have a same, similar flow to them. Um, if they're not set up well, or if the blade's starting to get dull, the soft maple, the blade will still catch and the blade will still plane, whereas the hard maple, it just like skips across the top and gives you all sorts of fits. Um, so they, they are different, um, but in many cases they're not. So again, with a question, it depends. <laughs> okay, last question. Brian Weber asked, do you use your Stanley 45 or 55 very much? Um, I use the 55 every chance I can get. Um, I don't use the 45 as much because my 45 has a few little odd quirks to it um, that just make it slightly more annoying. Whereas my 55 is a really nice plane in very, very good condition and works perfectly. And anytime I get to play with it, the 55 is just a lot of fun to play with. Um, it, it's a little more complicated to set up and the, the joy is in the setup of the plane and tuning it in and getting it working. And then once it's working, you do the work. Um, and so I do enjoy that. So if, if I have to pick one or the other, I pick my 55 over my 45. Uh, that being said, most people tend to like the 45 over the 55 because the few things that the 55 does that the 45 does not do are very rare things that you almost never use. Um, and so there really isn't a huge need to get a 55 because there are a few, only a few chances where the 45, uh, the, where the 45 can't do what you want it to do. Um, and most people like the 45 because it's a little bit easier to set up. There are less things to work through on it. But in my case, I really enjoy the setup on it, so I like the 55 because it's a little more complicated. Just like the reason I like white oak, it's a little more complicated than something else, and that's what gives it its value to me. I could say something right now. And that's why I like my wife too. <laughs> <laughs> cool, um, so I think that's about it for questions. Um, if I didn't get to yours, feel free to send it to me, and I'll try and answer many, as many as I can. Now, they had, there was a clarifying question is it working planes or any planes? Any plane in the shop. How many planes do I have in the shop? And not aeroplanes. Not that you have I any. don't have any aeroplanes in here. No. Um, and then post it after this goes... After this goes active, yes. So once it's yes. regular comments down below the video, that's where you put it in. And the winner for next week will get a card scraper and... Uh, 
thumb saver. So I think that's about it. And I'm looking forward to seeing a few of those at the coming uh, Midwest Tool Collectors meets. Anything else I'm missing? I think we got it. So I think that's about it. And until next time, have a wonderful day.